What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtues Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we started another AB game. This time, we our opponent was Luna, and as usual, I'm expecting Zero Escape, uh, this game, to, you know, stab me in the heart, and as we choose ally, have Luna, of all times, choose to finally betray somebody, let alone us. So, um, I'm, you know, looking forward to seeing what's gonna happen with these AB game results. I hope that I'll have a good 45 minutes or so, you know, fingers crossed, my family stays pretty quiet while I'm trying to record, and let's, uh, as Fi says, let's go! Time to see what the results are. Maybe it's different this time. Yeah, so Fi is definitely letting on that she's experienced this, you know, past before. Huh? This time? Did Luna really choose Betray? Hey! Fi, hold on! Crap. Did Luna really betray us, guys? Oh, come on, Luna, you've been such a sweetheart! Good, good, good. Looks like you're all here. Finally! Let's get ready to rock, Squidward! The results! If everybody would please direct their eyes to this monitor... Here we go, guys! It's time! How did we all vote? Oh, they're gonna show ours last. Oh! Oh! <gasps> yes! Okay, so first of all, there's a lot to digest here. Like, a lot. <laughs> the first thing being... Luna allied with us, which is a godsend. Um, I'm incredibly happy that that happened. But also, Kay and Clover chose to betray Alice. And notably, Alice chose to ally, arguably, probably, because Clover was on the other side. Which is why I'm really curious to see what the dynamic is between Kay and Clover. Because when they initially chose betray, it was like, okay, they didn't know Tenyoji. So, of course, they were going to choose betray because it's the logical thing to do. But with Clover and Alice being opponents... And their history of one that, or our history of trust, right? It's very shocking that Alice chose ally, yet Clover chose betray. And then Dio and Quark chose betray this time, where Temyoji chose ally. I would have expected Quark to really strongly advocate for ally, especially given the opponent was Temyoji, right? And we also saw in that other timeline that it seemed like Dio was really pushing for Betray, but Quark managed to push things in the direction of Ally. So maybe the dynamic between Dio and Quark is different in this timeline. But this is this is a very surprising, very interesting Abidex game result. Here are the results from your game. Although, now that I think about it, something interesting is that both Temyoji and Alice have one point, which I believe is a similarity to one of the other timelines we encountered, right? Where both of them were on their last, you know, their, their, the end. When we chose to, what was it? We chose to betray Alice, and then she finally chooses Ally. Alright, let's check the number on our bracelets. Thanks, Luna. <laughs> Oh no, it's nothing. You don't have to thank me. Also, actually, before we get into this, something that I'm thinking about is... We've talked about how, you know, the future can change the past in this sort of environment. And maybe Fi was so adamant about us choosing Betray, not for our own points, or not even for Luna's points, but because us choosing Betray might have some other consequence on the other pairs of people playing the ambi or teams playing the Ambidex game, right? Where if we choose ally, or you could think about it at least, if we choose ally, Luna chooses ally as well, but also everybody else chooses a particular way. But if we choose betray, there's a different set of patterns for the other players as well. And that's the outcome she was really concerned about, not our specific outcome with Luna. I only did what anybody would have done. I believed in you and Fi. When Luna glanced away, I threw Fi what can only be described as a smug grin. <laughs> Rather frustratingly, she didn't respond, only turned away unperturbed. I was about to press the issue when I heard Tamyoji's voice. Kuoku, 
Quark, what happened? No, it wasn't me. Dio-san tricked me. He told me he'd pick Ally. He promised. That's why I let him do the voting. Is this true, Dio? You serious? This kid's full of crap. What? I didn't do squat. Quark was the one who decided how we were going to vote. You want to know what he told me? You just leave the voting to me, Dio-san. Grandpa's gonna choose the ally for sure, because I'm his opponent on this one. I think we should betray. Wow, to be honest, I'm getting kind of tired of that grumpy old Baka. He's had a good life, but it's time for him to go. What do you say we leave the old fart here and leave? I've got a plan, see? I could never in a million years see Quark saying that. Don't worry about me. I'll just tell him you tricked me. He'll believe whatever I tell him. Besides, if he still trusts me, that'll make it easier to use him again later. I mean, again, all, all of this is true, right? Like, if he were to say this, but we still can't, we're only taking Dio's word that Quark said this, right? And it's admittedly tough to believe. What do you say, Dio-san? Pretty good plan, huh? Alright, let's do it. You're lying. I never should have trusted you. Dio. You're a lying jerk. And of course, we know from the other timeline that it seemed like there was some tension as well, but Quark seemed to eventually get Dio to cooperate in terms of choosing ally. Sure, kid, keep whining. See if I care. So in this case, we're tempted to believe Quark and be more suspect of Dio because of our experiences from the other timeline. I can only imagine if this was our first timeline, right? Grandpa! You believe me, right? Don't let this brat fool you, old man. All of this is just part of his plan. You baka! I'm not going to let you get away with this. That's enough, Quark. Don't lose your temper. How long have I known you? I could be deaf and blind and I'd still know if you were lying to me. Really? Huh. <laughs> You're just as gullible as he said you'd be. Hook, line, and sinker. Let me give you a little warning, Tenmyoji. That little baka is a hell of an actor. I'll bet you money he's a born con man. <laughs> What a phrase. I don't know what he is to you, but if I were told, but if I were you, I'd trust the kid as far as I could throw him. And at your age, that can't be much. You hear me, old man? Keep an eye on him. The thing is, even if Temyoji doesn't believe Dio right now, he's laying the footwork, right? The, the seed of doubt has been planted. And so even if there's been a long relationship of trust, there's still going to be a little bit of nagging in the back of Temyoji's mind. You know, this very loud evidence that Dio is at least proposing against that trust. It's alright, I understand. Really? Really? You seem pretty upset when we chose Betray. I'm so sorry. I apologize. 
At least they're both apologizing, right? The last time Kay and Clover chose betray, and I... Who did they betray? It wasn't... Luna. What were the pairings again? It was me and Phi and Alice. And then it was Temyoji, Dio, and Quark. And so it was Kay, Clover, and... Luna? But for some reason... No, no, no. It was Kay, Clover, and Temyoji. Right? Yeah, that's what the, the trio was. And on, and then it was um, Dio, Quark, and Luna. And they both chose Ally. That's right. So before with Temyoji... Oh, and that's right. That led to him trying to gain Clover's trust from there at that point forward. Right, right. But Kate and Clover just kind of explained it as like, it's the only logical choice. And Temyoji was like, no, it, I get it. Don't worry. I'll earn your trust. But I'm shocked they're actually apologizing here. I apologize. This is very unfortunate. It looked as though another argument had taken place while Quark and Dio were fighting. Whatever it had been about, it appeared to have resolved itself. The past is the past. There's no point complaining about it. I'll just have to try and get those points back in the next AB game. Zero, when does the next round start? What makes you think we'll be having another round? Well, you said round one. Is this stuff we've heard before? I think it is. Okay, so a lot of this is going to be the same where they explain the rules. Shout out to the skip function. It's actually a huge game changer. Because there are quite a few visual novels that I've really just not fully enjoyed or fully explored uh, due to, I guess, somewhat inconvenient replay features. Uh, Tokyo Dark is a game that I really enjoyed when I played it, but to get the big picture you have to play through it multiple times. and. I didn't feel I had enough information about what events did what and how much certain things influenced certain decisions and so I felt like I'd just be going through it so blind and having to go through it so many times and um, I never, you know, never finished the story essentially as a result, uh, which is a real shame, but anyways, yeah, it did change. Mine changed from red to cyan. Me too. Mine Saya now. Oh, so we're going to be paired up with Alice. And Clover is our third. Interesting. Very, very interesting. So we're paired up with Alice. That's going to be a crazy dynamic. And there's a good chance that we could be together with um, Clover. Mine too. Wait. I guess the colors weren't the only thing that changed. It switched from pair to solo. You're right, mine switched from solo to pair. Mine is now a solo as well. Looks like mine's changed too. I've gone from solo to pair. I'm still a pair. The three of us seem to be magenta now as well. I'm yellow. And it still says solo. Phi, you, and Dio are yellow now too, right? Yeah. Looks like I'm a pair. Phi and Dio are a pair. When? What? What an interesting pair. Phi and Dio. I can't wait to see how that goes. I can just see Dio being an absolute jerk and Phi not taking any of it, but then Dio not backing down, but then Phi also having the, the sensibility to be mature and not let it escalate too much. Interesting. Anyways, Quark says, when did they change? Back when the AB gates closed. As soon as the gates close, your colors get all shuffled up automatically. The pair and solo assignments hop around a bit too. And of course, it's totally random. No rules or anything. Yeah, I don't know if I really buy that whole totally random thing. Now, with all that explained, I must bid you adieu. 
Sadly, we may never meet again. No, in fact, we may not, because we're going to be skipping quite a bit going on. Ah, yes, this is Sigma recalling his past. All of those unfortunate events. And now we're back to some new stuff. Why is this happening to me? I spent a few minutes wallowing in misery. I figured I deserved at least a little self-pity. Woo, little pity party. But even I knew that brooding and whining wasn't going to get me anywhere. Like Kay had said, we needed to at least try and find another way out. So I shook my head to clear it, stood up straight, and headed off. We have already been to the lounge, or no, we've actually explored everywhere before, haven't we? Um, this is a new timeline, though, where, I don't know, these things could be different, right? We came from the lounge because, or we're going to lounge, but we came from the lounge earlier because that's the room that we had escaped from, right? Oh, Sigma. Perfect timing. You were here earlier, right? If only we're joined by the two most suspicious people amongst the crew. <laughs> yeah, I was. Phi, Luna, and I were the first into this room. Did you find anything suspicious? Like a secret pathway or something? You really think that's the kind of detail I would have neglected to mention? Anything else then? Anything out of the ordinary? Out of the ordinary... Hmm... Well, I mean, everything about this room is out of the ordinary. How about this? Isn't that obvious? It's an astronomy magazine. Now, apparently it's got an article about a, a lunar eclipse. It says it's going to happen on December 31st, 2028. This New Year's Eve, then. So, this is con somewhat confirming Alice's time frame, right? She had been living in the year 2028 prior to this. Yeah, six days from now. And similarly, Sigma was also living in the year 2028, and we, I mean, we know that he recalled from when he got abducted and everything, it was, you know, Christmas morning on December, or December 25th, 2028. But we also know that some of the characters might be from a completely different time period all over together, given the cryostasis with the treatment rooms, right? So, we can at least confirm that Alice and Sigma, and likely Clover as well, are from 2028. Wait, what did you say? What do you mean, six days? Uh, well, today's Christmas, right? So... Wait a minute. When were you grabbed? Didn't you hear me? On Christmas. About two or three in the morning. Wait, did they pick you up on a different day? Uh, uh. Yeah. I was abducted in the middle of the night on December 22nd. What about you? I... I think it was the 20th? Then we were all taken on different days. So then... If Dio's telling the truth, <laughs> um, he would also be from 2028. Does that mean we were just sleeping until the notary game started? Maybe they kept us on a Sopral IV drip or something? That's possible, but at the same time... I don't know. Um, that would be a long time, right? Would the cryostasis be used only for like a week though? Right? It also means that we have no idea what day it is right now. If everybody's been under the impression it's, you know, today, or even the day after they were abducted, well, then it's... A lot of people are under the impression it's a different day um, than what it actually is. But we really have no idea. In theory, you could have everyone wake up at the same time if you got the dosage right. Then today might not even be the 25th, exactly. I think that's likely. Yeah, some of us were probably abducted after you. So, maybe the magazine... Is it the night of that total lunar eclipse? Is that related to some phenomenon, you know, that's pertinent to the morphogenetic field or something? Oh. Well, I guess that explains why I feel kind of dizzy. You too? 
I felt disoriented since I woke up. My body doesn't feel... right. Maybe it's because we were asleep for so long. Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable. Your muscles start to atrophy if you don't use them. Uh... Then... I mean, I'm also trying to evaluate here what Dio is saying about, oh, you could put him on a soap roll. I will say, putting him on a soap roll beta drip, that terminology is not very common amongst people that aren't in the healthcare industry. So maybe Dio has some background, some sort of knowledge that would give him that familiarity with that with those terms. It's not unheard of, right, by any means. But I don't think people would refer to it as a drip unless they were very familiar with IVs. Um, and then what, he was a circus person? So I, I just like don't think that would be in his lexicon. But, hmm, I don't know. Uh, then what day is today? Beats me. I have no idea. Well, what about you guys? Was there anything interesting in the crew quarters or the infirmary? Yeah. No, nothing in the quarters. Well, there was a book about a cat. A cat? Yeah, the cat in the hat. <laughs> something, something about a cat in a box and whether it's dead or alive. Didn't make any sense to me, though. Hmm. Well, it doesn't really sound like something that's going to help us get out of here. Yeah, I didn't think so either. Alice, care to comment? How about the infirmary? Find anything interesting? Well, actually, there was one thing. What? I wasn't trying to hide it. The red moment to mention it just never came up. You don't need to apologize, just tell us what you found. Yeah, it's like, get it over with already. Well, see for yourself. It's a newspaper article, looks like. Yeah, it was in the safe in the infirmary. Let me see that, so I think we've heard this before. Ah. But of course, different people are reading it, so it technically counts as separate dialogue. Maybe we'll get some new reactions to it, though. But what the heck? What's Radical 6? Just read the article. I swallowed and began to read. The Radical 6 virus continues to spread across the globe, globe like wildfire. The WHO, the WHO has confirmed that the death toll is estimated to have passed 100,000 victims. Immediate quarantine of any infected patients is strongly advised. Do, do you think we're in a quarantine facility? You mean you think we got infected with this Radical 6 thing? Come on, you gotta be kidding me. Well, we don't know anything for sure, but... Look at us, we seem pretty healthy. Admittedly, I don't know what the symptoms of Radical 6 are. But if it's killing people worldwide, they must be horrific. <laughs> now just look at this soft, lustrous skin. This perfect, shapely face. Does this beauty look like something infected with an awful disease? Oh, Alice. You want to touch it, don't you, boy? I can see it in your eyes. Go on, try. Dio's, Dio and Sigma are like, all right, don't know really, don't really know uh, what's gone in here. Actually, that's more what's going on in Dio's mind. Sigma's like, really? Can I? <laughs> well, I am feeling a little weird. And that could just be from sleeping for a couple days. Or maybe it's a side effect of that drug. Besides, if this is where they ship people to quarantine them, don't you think there aren't enough, uh, people? This thing is killing people all over the world, right? And it also worth noting, things seem to be very deliberate about the number of people here, right? The fact that there are nine people seems to be instrumental to their experience. And if you're looking in the setting of a quarantine for, you know, amidst a pandemic where hundreds of thousands of people are dying, 
Um, creating this large a quarantine facility for specifically nine people is not a very efficient solution, right? So why would there only be nine of us here? Yeah, I guess you do have a point. Think about it. Zero is forcing us to play this nonary game. Why would the government quarantine people and then make them play a game? Also a good point. Yes, it is. So you're saying there's no connection between our abductions and this virus? Probably not. Hmm. Well, it's still something we should remember, I suppose. I mean, even if we're safe in here, our friends and families are still out there. And the other thing is, if we're forcibly being, you know, playing this nonary game that's being set up by Zero, and the safe is the reward for escaping from a particular room, and, you know, this item, this newspaper article was left in the safe, it seems incredibly intentional, right? Zero isn't here to just try to kill everybody off. He or she wants something specific to happen. And laying these newspaper articles, these extra rules in certain safes is one way of accomplishing that. And so another question to ask is, how does informing the participants of the nonary game about Radical Six change the nonary game, right? Because that's going to provide some insight into the motivations of Zero. Anyways, I mean, even if we're safe in here, our friends and families are still out there. That's true. I hope they're alright. Wait a minute. When did this virus actually show up? I've never heard of it before. Neither have I. Me either. Really? So what day is it? If this Radical Six killed hundreds of thousands of people while we were asleep... Just how long have we been here for? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a really good question. Hmm. You know what? So if three people were in cryostasis, right? Three people. And Dio claims to have been abducted on December 20th. Presumably 2028, but we're not sure. And Alice says December 22nd, we were December 25th. And we're all thinking in terms of 2028 as well. But Clover is from the same time period as Alice. Well, that makes four people, right? So I'm tempted to think because Clover and Alice can attest to each other and, you know, experiencing time together, that it's between Sigma and Dio for somebody who is technically not from 2028 but is attempting to be, given we're the main character and have access to Sigma's memories, which could be false, but are presumably true, it makes me think Dio is actually lying about what time period he's from. Which is pretty suspect. How did he... What did he say about the virus? They were talking about symptoms and stuff, right? What did he say when they talk about this? Hmm... Actually, there was one thing. Okay, here we go. Sigma says, what the heck, what's Radical Six? And then Alice says, just read the article. How does Dio respond to all this? You mean, you think we got infected with this Radical Six thing? Come on, you gotta be kidding me. Okay, so he at least refers to it as this Radical Six thing, um, which is a way of speaking about it with very little certainty, right? Very little familiarity. Hmm. Okay. I was thinking if we looked at how Dio talked about the virus and Dio demonstrated some sort of familiarity, that would contradict his claim that he's from 2028, which seems to be a time period where the virus doesn't actually exist or hasn't really done anything. Very intriguing. Anyways, just how long have we been here? I don't think you'll be able to just puzzle that out. If we want the truth, we need to find more information. Okay, I think I'll go look around a little bit more, or look around a bit more then. I've already spent plenty of time here anyway. But this was an incredibly productive conversation. I feel like we really learned a lot, and Dio is now incredibly suspicious. Before, he was just kind of a jerk and a little bit suspect, but now... 
Now we have reason to believe he may just be lying in general, for whatever reason. Whether he's Zero, or an accomplice, or some sort of psychopath, <laughs> I don't really know, but but it's definitely worth paying extra attention to. Alice and I are going to stick around. You know, just in case you miss something. Don't really feel like I can trust your eyes. Whatever. <laughs> Likewise, Dio. <laughs> I turned and headed for the exit. Where to next? Alright, so we'll go to... I kind of want to go to the crew quarters. I wonder if we'll still find the number... I think it's 03 bomb? We'll see. See who's here. Huh. So these are the crew quarters, huh? Sigma. Oh, Sigma. What are you doing here? Hey, come on, man, don't be like that. We aren't enemies, are we? Hmm. I wonder. What happened to you, Temyoji? You've been acting weird ever since we found that lady's body. You think so? What? You sure it ain't just all in your head? Fine. Let's move on to something else then. Yeah, Temyoji's obviously quite off place, but granted things have been snow snowballing for him, right? Getting placed in the Nonary game is tough as it is. Finding this lady is, was it clearly very upsetting. We don't know why yet, but it was very upsetting Temyoji. And then afterwards, playing the AB game and being betrayed by the team involving Quark, and now having to really question how much you actually trust Quark and how to proceed. Right? Do you blindly trust Quark still and suspect Dio 100%? Or do you approach with, you know, future interactions with Quark and Dio with a little bit of suspicion? And if so, that's gonna weigh on somebody over time. You and Quark. Is he your, uh, grandkid? Why do you want to know? Why? Well, I mean, why do you think? He keeps calling you Grandpa. Of course I'm gonna wonder what the deal is. We all got kidnapped and brought here, apparently for no reason. Now they're making us all play some sort of weird game. Just trying to find a little meaning in all this nonsense. That's it. To be honest, that was pretty tactful word choice from Sigma. Sigma tends to, you know, blurt things out and be pretty uh, brutal with some of his words at times, but that was a very tactful response. So tell me, Temyoji, are you really Quark's grandpa? Of course, somebody walks in. Clover. Luna. Sigma? Where'd you come from? Did you not want me here? No, it's okay, I guess. I just thought Temyoji was the only other person here. This is the crew quarters. I came here with Clover and Temyoji. We decided we'd split up to investigate. Huh. Makes sense. So, you find anything? Zero. What? Which one? <laughs> no. I meant I found zero things. What about you? Anything suspicious? I didn't find anything either. What about the bomb? Although I guess you could say this whole facility is suspicious. Yeah, you've got a point there. So why do you think Zero put all these puzzles and stuff all over the place? Hmm. Well, maybe solving all these puzzles is part of the Nonary game. Really? I thought the Nonary game was a couple rounds of the AV game. Why would he need the puzzles and stuff then? Well, what is the Nonary game then? Why is Zero making us do all this? Um... Well, this is just, um, speculation, but... Maybe it's for entertainment? So rich, powerful people can watch? Entertainment? I mean, 
For what it's worth, it's a pretty entertaining game, right? Yes. They're probably off in an opulent theater, watching a struggle while they drink brandy and eat caviar. You think so, huh? So some rich baka killed her off for kicks? What kind of a death is that? Well, maybe her dying didn't have anything to do with the rest of the game. No. K was right. If her dying wasn't part of all this, the rabbit would have said something. But what we get? Nothing. Just tells us to keep... to keeping playing and disappears. I can only think of one reason he'd do that. Murdering her was always part of Zero's plans. It's interesting that he says that, given that we've been on different timelines where it doesn't happen, or it doesn't happen in a way that we find out about it. But it seems very intentional here, right? If you can think of another way all this fits, well, I'd love to hear it. So you're saying that Zero Senior is the one who murdered the old lady? Maybe, or at the very least orchestrated it. Well, it sure looks that way. Well, that means there's a 7 in 1 chance anybody could be in the mur could be the murderer. Wait. 7. Well, Alice and I can't be 0. Okay. I'll let the I part go, but you're going to have to give me a little to convince me Alice can't be 0. What? Come on. Alice and I know each other. Well, um, how do you know each other? Yeah, we can't really verify or give much credit to your claim that, well, of course she can't be zero. We know each other um, until we know exactly how you know each other and that one you're trustworthy as well. For all we know, you could both be zero together. I guess you could say we're co-workers. Mm. And where do you co-work? In organization. So, That's kind of vague. What kind of organization? Um, that's... How compelling. I can't tell you. What? What do you mean you can't tell us? I mean, I can't tell you. Just forget about it, okay? Why can't you tell us? Because... It's confidential. I promised I wouldn't tell. Oh, come on. Don't give me that. Look around you, Clover. You really think this is the time for playing it close to the chest? Yeah. What if the people you work for have something to do with what's going on here? Yeah. You're right. Maybe I should tell you. Finally. Sorry, but I just don't really trust you guys. I mean, what if one of you is zero? Could be any of you. I mean, for what it's worth. Zero probably already knows whatever you're potentially telling, so I don't know if that's much of an apprehension, but... Sorry. Anyway, I think that's enough about me and Alice. I just don't really feel like I can trust you guys. Maybe if that changes... Then I can tell you. Interesting. So, the Japanese was more of like a, that I can like share with you, everything I know. Like, open the floodgates. So, 
I guess I'll go now. Go? Where are you going? I don't know. Haven't really figured it out yet. <laughs> then I'll be going too. <laughs> Clover's like, this place is awkward. I'm leaving. Fine. There she goes. So, Timyoji. Save it. I don't trust you any more than she does. In other words, you aren't going to tell me anything, are you? Sorry. Well. Unfortunately, we haven't really gained the trust of too many people, but I left Temyoji and headed back to the hallway. There were so many questions I wanted answers to, but it was looking like I'd have to suffer in ignorance for a while longer. Besides, there were plenty of more immediate problems that needed my attention. I sighed and filed my questions away to be dealt with later. I needed to focus. There was only one room I hadn't visited yet. Alright, and that's going to be the infirmary. However, we are going to go to the infirmary in the next episode. My time to record has run out, unfortunately. So, I have to get going. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I really did. I feel like we're getting almost like an opportunity to cross-examine. Um, some of the characters between the different timelines, which is a really cool aspect of this game. And I'm looking forward to learning more about Clover and Alice's history. We've obviously had more chances to talk to Alice about that, but now we're... And we've heard what Clover tells other people, right? Um, but this time around we're getting to hear a little bit more from Clover herself. So I hope we get more chances to do so. I mean, for what it's worth, we might be paired up with Alice and uh, Clover for the next AB game, let alone, you know, the Chromatic Doors, so... Should be really interesting, but um, yeah. Until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete. Ah!